You know that feeling, right? The sense that time is constantly flowing, pushing us from a past that's gone forever into a future that doesn't exist yet. It's maybe the most basic experience we have. But what if that feeling is completely wrong? What if it's all just an incredibly persistent illusion? Today, we are diving head first into one of the most profound and frankly unsettling ideas in all of physics, the block universe. All right, so let's just jump right in with the question that gets to the absolute heart of it all. Is the future already written? I know, it sounds like something out of a philosophy class or a sci-fi movie, but it's a question that modern physics, specifically Einstein's relativity, actually forces us to take very, very seriously. So to really get our heads around this giant idea, here's how we're going to tackle it. First up, we'll explore why we're even asking if time is an illusion in the first place. Then we'll define what exactly the block universe is. After that, we'll get into the really shocking stuff, the proof coming straight from Einstein. We'll also check out some rival theories, and finally, we'll wrestle with the big one. What does this all mean for free will in a cosmos that might already be finished? Okay, section one. Let's start with this fundamental conflict. Because really, this whole debate is a collision between two powerful ideas. On one side, you have our deepest, most intuitive feeling about how reality works. And on the other, you have the cold, hard, and deeply strange picture painted by the laws of physics. And this slide, wow, it just lays it all out perfectly. On the left, we've got the manifest image. This is your gut. It's the world as you experience it every single second. Time flows like a river. The past is just a memory. The future is a sea of possibilities. And only this moment, right now, is truly real. But then look at the right. The scientific image suggests something completely different. It's what some philosophers call a view from no when, a perspective from outside of time altogether. From this viewpoint, time doesn't flow at all. It's just another dimension, like up, down, left, right, and forward, back. The entire lifespan of the universe, from the Big Bang all the way to its ultimate end, is just there, a single static four-dimensional block where change is just an illusion of our consciousness moving through it. So that giant static object we just mentioned? That's it. That's the block universe. This is the absolute core of what we're talking about today. So let's take a minute to really break down what it is and what it means for the reality we think we know. So the whole idea of the block universe is built on this one philosophical concept called eternalism. And it's actually pretty simple to state, but the consequences are just massive. It says that the past, the present, and the future are all equally real. Think about that. The dinosaurs aren't gone. They're just in a different part of the space-time block. Your 100th birthday isn't a vague possibility. It already exists. All of these moments are just different locations on the cosmic map of time. Okay, but how do we even begin to picture that? Well, this analogy is probably the best way. Imagine the entire history of the universe is a finished novel sitting on a shelf. Every single page from the first chapter to the last already exists. They're all equally real. Our consciousness? It's like we're just reading the book, one page at a time. For us, the story seems to unfold, moment by moment, creating surprise and suspense. But the whole story is already there, written from beginning to end. Our feeling of time passing is just the experience of turning the pages. And this gets to one of the weirdest parts of the whole theory. We all feel like now is special, right? Like it's the leading edge of reality. But in the block universe, now isn't special at all. It's just a label for your location in time the same way the word here is a label for your location in space. If I say I'm here, it just means my position. If you, somewhere else, say you're here, you're also right. Well, now is the same thing. For Julius Caesar, his now was just his location in time. From the universe's perspective, his now is just as valid as our now. There's no single privileged universal moment of now. Now, at this point, you might be thinking, okay, this is just some weird philosophical puzzle, right? Well, no. The most powerful arguments for the block universe don't come from philosophers in armchairs. They come from Albert Einstein, whose theory of relativity didn't just tweak our understanding of time, it completely blew it to pieces. See, before Einstein, pretty much everyone, including Isaac Newton, thought of time as the single giant clock for the whole universe, ticking away at the same rate for everybody everywhere. Simple. But Einstein's special relativity showed that this is fundamentally wrong. One of its wildest conclusions is something called the relativity of simultaneity. All that means is that two people who are moving relative to each other will actually disagree on what's happening at the same time in distant places. Your now and my now are literally not the same slice of the universe. 
It's not a feeling, it's a physical fact. And this leads us to something called the Andromeda Paradox, which is a fantastic way to see the consequences. Let's walk through this, because it's wild. Okay, step one, you've got Alice standing still and Bob just walking past her. Simple enough. Step two, for Alice standing still, some event is happening right now, way over in the Andromeda galaxy. But step three, because Bob is moving, even just walking, his slice of now is tilted compared to Alice's. Across millions of light years, that tiny tilt makes a huge difference. For Bob, the events that are happening now in Andromeda could be a full week in Alice's future. And here's the kicker, step four. If that future event is happening in Bob's present moment, then it has to be real, right? It's not a potential event. For him, it's reality. Which leads to the mind-blowing conclusion in step five. The future must already exist. It has to be just as real and solid as the present. Okay, so the block universe has some serious physics backing it up, but it's not the only idea out there. To be fair, we've got to look at the other ways philosophers and physicists have tried to picture reality to see how they stack up. This table is a great way to see the main contenders. First, you have presentism. That's our gut feeling, that only the present is real. But as we just saw with the Andromeda paradox, it just doesn't work with relativity. Whose present is the real one? Physics has no answer. Then there's the growing block, which is a sort of compromise. It says the past and present are real, and the future grows into existence. But that requires a special edge of reality, a universal now, which again, relativity says doesn't exist. The moving spotlight is another attempt. It says the whole block is real, but there's a special spotlight of nowness moving along it. But what is this spotlight? Physics has no place for it. As you can see, right there in the last row, Eternalism, our block universe, is the only one that lines up perfectly with modern physics. The others try to save our intuition, but they do it by fighting our best-tested science. So let's just say for a minute that we live in a block universe. What does that mean for us, for our lives, our choices? This is where the physics gets really personal and where it crashes into some of the biggest puzzles in science. The elephant in the room, of course, is free will. The incompatibilist view is pretty straightforward. If the future is already written, then free will is an illusion. Period. That feeling you have of choosing what to have for breakfast this morning wasn't a real choice between open options. It was always going to be cereal. But the compatibilists have a really interesting comeback. They say, hang on, let's redefine free will. For them, free will just means you get to act on your own desires without somebody else forcing you. So yes, your decision was always part of the block, but it was a part of the block caused by you, by your own thoughts and feelings. The chain of events was fixed, sure, but your brain was a crucial link in that chain. The outcome was set, but you were the one who set it. Now, just when you think you've got it figured out, here comes the biggest scientific wrench in the works. Our other great theory of physics, quantum mechanics, seems to say the exact opposite of relativity. It suggests that, at the most fundamental level, reality is all about probability and randomness. The future isn't fixed at all. So what gives? Well, one wild, almost unbelievable solution is the many worlds interpretation. It suggests that every time a quantum event could go one way or another, the universe actually splits. Both outcomes happen, each in its own brand new parallel universe. This actually saves the fixed block-like nature of reality because the whole system, the entire collection of branching universes, evolves in a perfectly determined way. It just means we don't live in a block universe, we live in a block multiverse, a timeless, static structure containing every possible reality. But we have to be really clear here. This debate is not over, not by a long shot. There are very serious physicists like Lee Smolin who think this whole block universe idea is a huge mistake. They argue that our deep feeling that time is real and that it flows isn't some illusion we need to explain away. They believe it might be the most fundamental thing about our cosmos and that maybe even the laws of physics themselves change over time. So the idea of a frozen, timeless reality is a powerful one, but it is absolutely not the final word. And so that brings us right back to you. After all this physics and philosophy, how do you see your own life? Are you an adventurer walking down a path, forging your future with every step you take? Or are you more like a finger, tracing a line that has already been drawn, from your first moment to your very last? The answer might just change how you think about, well, everything. Thanks for joining this explainer. 